and he tosses me this bag. And I, it's, a, it's a Ziploc bag and it's a frozen bone. I'm like, I'm saying to myself, what's this, like a soup bone or something, you know, like a dog bone? I said, what's this? He goes, oh, that's my hip. He had a prosthetic hip put in back, I think, in the early 2000s. Being in the classic car business, you can be in touch with a lot of different people. Regular guys off the street, buying hot rods and muscle cars and stuff like that. And sometimes you get some, uh, you know, influential people, high profile clients, and I've had a few of those. One of the best high profile clients I ever had was uh, the late, great Eddie Van Halen. Let me tell you, Eddie was a fantastic guy. One of my heroes as a kid growing up, rock star, right? You know, everybody knows Eddie Van Halen. A buddy of mine at the time used to work for Fender Guitar and Eddie used Fender guitars. In his early days, he used Gibson, and that ties into what I'm about to tell you. He calls me up and he says, hey, Joe, he goes, uh, I, got a, I got a client. He goes, he's got a couple hot rods. He's got to sell them. He just can't go selling them on his own. I'm like, what's the story? He goes, well, he goes, it's, it's Ed Van Halen. I'm like, oh. As soon as he said Ed Van Halen, I said to him, I said, the 256 Chevys? He goes, how'd you know that? I said, well, this is now 2008, by the way. Because 10 years ago, Super Chevy Magazine did an article on his 256 Chevys and, and his 55. And I knew the cars. I remember, I said, I have the magazine. And he's like, yeah. He goes, those, those are the cars that Eddie wants to sell. I was like, well, I said, you know, I said, I get it. I said, Eddie just can't put an ad on Auto Trader and take phone calls out. People come to his house and show him a car. He goes, exactly. He goes, I'll put you in touch with his uh, assistant. We'll get this thing all set up. A couple days go by, I get a call from a gentleman named Matt. Nice guy, Eddie's right-hand guy, does everything for Eddie. Super nice guy, calls me up, I'm in California, and he goes, uh, Joe, my name's Matt, I'm Ed's uh, assistant. He goes, uh, I got your number from uh, Richie over at Fender. I said, yeah. He's got a couple cars he wants to sell, and uh, he's, you know, you come highly recommended, and you were the guy we need to talk to. I said, no problem. So I never thought I was gonna ever meet Ed. I figured I'm just gonna deal with the assistant, go in, do a deal, figure out a deal on the cars. We make an appointment to go up to LA. I get up there, I meet Matt, and I'm actually, I thought I was going to an office. I'm going to Eddie's house. I'm like, wow, all right, cool, man. This is Eddie Van Halen's house. I go up, big giant gates. I pull up, I hit the button. Hi, how you doing? Gates open up, I drive in, and the row of garages are open up, the doors are open, and I see a 56 Chevy sitting in there. And I knew the car, burgundy, pro street car, 454, automatic, tubbed, slammed on the ground. Car was built in the early 90s, killer car. I was like, wow, there it is, I, that's the car, right? And now I'm starting to take this all in. I'm like, man, I'm at Eddie Van Halen's house. This is pretty good. I mean, I saw Eddie Van Halen in concert when I was 14. I was like, this is awesome. So this guy, Matt comes out and he goes, yeah, he's a car, I'm looking at it. I said, okay, I said, where's the Nomad? And it was a 56 Nomad. Turquoise, turquoise interior, older restoration, but very nice car. Factory air car, first year Chevrolet factory air, which is pretty rare. And he goes, oh, he goes, we got to go up the hill. So we go up this hill and you make a turn and there's this big block, big building. I'm going, well, that's a pretty obscure building. And I see 5150 painted on the, on the side of the building. I'm like, oh, that's the studio. The 5150 studios, Ed Studios on his property. I said, that, is that, that's a studio? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'll give you a tour of that later. I said, awesome. So there's a Nomad sitting right there. As I'm walking to the Nomad, behind the building, there's a red short bed Chevy truck with the Van Halen stripe down the side, covered in leaves, four flat tires, billet wheels on it, they're Boyd's. And I'm looking as I'm walking, I'm going, is that the van hauler that Boyd Coddington built for Ed? He goes, yeah, yeah, that thing's been sitting there for years. So, cha-ching, I put that in the back of my head. I said, we're gonna talk about that thing later. I go look at the Nomad and I'm walking around and I got my hood, I'm, nice car. Out of the corner of my eye, I see somebody walk out of the building, but I'm not paying attention to anybody. And I'm looking at the car, I'm in it, I'm under the hood, I'm climbing underneath the car. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, it's a nice car, you know, we'll figure out something. And I see this guy standing kind of over here, out of my, just on, just on my peripheral. And I thought he was a handyman or some housekeeper guy, you know? He's, the guy's got a, a strap-on light on his head with LEDs. He's wearing a pair of magnifying, like, uh, reader glasses. And he's just standing there. And I got my head under the hood. And Matt says, oh, Joe, he goes, uh, he goes I want you to introduce you to Ed. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, Eddie Van Halen, I get to meet my rock star hero. And I turn and it's this guy 
with short hair, a light on his head, and magnifying glasses. And he goes, hey, how you doing, Van Allen? I'm like, oh, Ed, how you doing? He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, he goes, I'm working on a guitar. He goes, my sight's not what it used to be. He takes the things off, takes the readers off. I know, Eddie, when you picture Eddie Van Halen, what do you think of? You think Eddie Van Halen, 80s, ripped jeans, sleeveless T-shirt, long hair, ripping a guitar, right? Well, this is 2010 Eddie Van Halen, 2009 Eddie Van Halen. You know, the short hair, subdued. And I was like, wow, Ed, how you doing? You know, and he was the nicest guy in the world. So we're looking at the Nomad, he's telling me about the car, and I see the license plate, license plate on the Nomad says, she mad. I'm like, I said, what's with the plate? What's with the play on names? Ed goes, it's a good story. He goes, let me tell you. He goes, I bought this car for my first wife, for Valerie. It was Valerie Bertinelli's car. We had plans on a Saturday night to go to dinner with some friends. He goes, I find this car in the auto trader for sale at like four in the afternoon in LA. I jump my motorcycle and I run down to go look at it. He goes, meanwhile, Valerie's blowing up my phone because we have to go to dinner with some friends. Long story short, I buy the car, have it flatbed at home, eight o'clock at night, we didn't go to dinner. She is pissed off at me. The car got named She Mad, and it stuck with the car, and that was her car, you know, for, for years. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So that was a good story when we, when we went to sell the car. So he's like, well, what are we gonna do? I was like, let me get him back to my shop. I'll get them detailed. I can tell they've been sitting around for a while. They're a little stale. He goes, yeah, he goes, I don't really drive anymore. He goes, I, he goes, I got no connection to that Nomad anymore. He goes, the 56 I'm done with. And at this point in time, Eddie and Alex were into uh, racing spec BMWs. And he was doing a, 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 he was, they were into road racing BMWs. And he had this killer BMW in a garage. I get in the truck and I go back down to San Diego where I was. And as I'm driving, I'm thinking, what am I going to do with these cars? How am I going to market them? Where am I going to sell them? And I figured this and that. And I'm going, wait a minute. This was like around August. I said, we got a long lead to Scottsdale. We're going to take these things to Barrett Jackson, do a good hype on them. We'll get them done. So I get back down to my showroom. I call Ed's assistant, thank him for meeting Ed. And I said, this is, I said, I got an idea. And he says, what's that? And I give him the idea. I said, any way we can get two guitars to match each car that Ed could sign and they can go with the car. And he goes, Joe, that's a great idea. He goes, hang on a second, Ed's right here. And he, I can hear him talking to Ed, Ed grabs the phone and he goes, that's an awesome idea. He goes, yeah, he goes, okay. He goes, hit, and all of a sudden Ed goes into rock star mode. He goes, I'm gonna call my guitar designer, the custom shop, they'll build these two guitars. He goes, we'll paint them to match the cars, blah, 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 blah. The whole thing just started to come together and gel in about five minutes on the phone. I go back up to Ed's house a week later with my truck and trailer to pick up the two cars to bring them down. I'm at Ed's and I got a consignment contract. We're sitting in his living room and we're having a conversation. He's like, you want something to drink? I said, yeah. He goes, all right, I'll bring you a Coke, right? And he's in the kitchen and I got the paperwork laid out and we're talking about doing the guitar and then we have to do a video shoot. Eddie comes over and he's got a soda in his hand. He's got a, I remember, never forget, he's got a can of Coke in his hand for me and he's got this plastic Ziploc bag. I'm not paying attention to it. So he walks up, he goes, oh, hey, he goes, I want to show you something. And he tosses me this bag. And I, it's, a, it's a Ziploc bag and it's a frozen bone. I'm like, I'm saying to myself, what's this, like a soup bone or something, you know, like a dog bone? I said, what's this? He goes, oh, yeah, that's my hip. He had a prosthetic hip put in back, I think, in the early 2000s. And I'm laughing. I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that ball socket. Yeah, that is a hip. He goes, yeah, I kept it, right? So we get the whole deal done. Ed comes down to our place. We got the cars all prepped, ready for the auction. Some killer photos with Ed and the cars and the guitars, and we're having a good time. We get back to my showroom and Ed wants to see our place. We got about 60 cars in the showroom. It was a pretty big operation. I got a 47 Dodge cab over truck, all in the back, custom. It's got a 7.3 Ford turbo diesel in it, five speed, two speed rear, air conditioning, I mean, set up to run and drive, you know, and it's had a stake body bed on it, a red and black killer truck. Ed's drawn to this thing like a, like, like a fly to a light bulb. And he's all over this thing. He goes, oh, this thing is awesome. He goes, how much is it? And I think it was like 48 grand. And he goes, I want to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I want it. Boom, boom. Sitting in it. You know, when he's, he goes, you start it up? I'm like, yeah. So put it in the clutch, put it in neutral, turn away for the glow plug to come up and hit it. And he's like, oh yeah, he goes, I can go to Home Depot in this thing. He goes, look at all the stuff I can put in the back of it. He was just, wouldn't leave, right? His, his agent's there, his manager's there, his assistant's there. He's got to get back to LA for something. He doesn't want to leave. So I look, at his, I look at his assistant, Matt, and I go, 
we got another she mad problem here, don't we? He goes, oh yeah. He goes, he gets in tune on something. He doesn't want to leave. We cut the deal. He goes back to LA. We take the cars to Scottsdale. The auction is a huge success. Now, Ed's supposed to show up at the auction. At the time the auction's going on in Scottsdale, the NAMM show is going on. That's the big show for all the musicians and the music industry. And Ed is releasing his uh, EVH brand of guitars for 2010. This is uh, 2008 into 2009. He's releasing the guitars. It's an absolute smash success. I get a call at like midnight on Friday while the auction's going on in Scottsdale. Ed's supposed to be there Saturday for the car selling Saturday afternoon from his assistant, Joe, we can't go. He goes, the guitar thing was just, everybody was blown away. Ed is slammed with stuff for tomorrow and we have to go to Europe. I'm like, all right, all right, that, no show. I'll let them know. Next morning, I get to the auction. Auction's running. I get with media. I tell them, listen, Ed's not going to be here. So the media goes, all right, well, you're going to have to go up on the podium and talk about the cars. He goes, because we got it slotted. I was like, all right, I can do it. But, you know, Day goes by. Cars are in a staging lane. They're filming. We're doing all kinds of interviews about the cars and the pictures of the guitar and everything. And it, it's a pretty good hit. We get the cars up on block. The, uh, the 56 Chevy comes up first, I'm up on the big podium, I'm looking down at the sea of people, and I'm talking about the cars, and I apologize, because everybody was expecting Eddie to show up, and I apologize that Eddie couldn't show up, but he had a huge success with his guitar release. I said he was at the NAMM show, he just couldn't leave, he had to go to Europe today. Unfortunately, you know, he couldn't be here, but I'm the substitution, I know it's not much to look at and ask for, but that's all I can offer you. And everybody laughed, it was actually pretty good. First car sells, after everything, the 56 Chevy does 103 grand. The Nomad comes up, it sells after fees and everything, it does 94 grand, which was huge money for a Nomad in 2009, and huge money for a 56 Chevy for a 10 or 15, almost 20 year old, probably a 15 year old, uh, you know, pro street car. The dust settles, we get back from Scottsdale, I'm in California. Everything's happy as a clam. There's actually some write-ups online about the event and the cars, and the cars popped up all over the place, and I thought that was pretty cool, you know? And uh, to be associated with all that kind of stuff. And my buddy from Fender calls me. He goes, Joe, man, he goes, everything looked great. He goes, I'm glad everything happened. You know, the way it did, it all came together. I said, that was such a good idea doing the guitar thing. I said, it just tied everything together. I was like, yeah, I said, it really worked out. I said, I'm, I'm happy the way it worked out. What happened with this truck Eddie bought? I heard he bought a truck from you. I said, yeah, I got to deliver it. I said, now that I'm back from Scottsdale, I got to deliver it next week. He goes, great. I'm glad things worked out. He goes, you know, we're friends and we've been friends for a long time. He goes, but you always got to throw a bone to your friend. And I said, buddy, you have no idea how real that is. By now you know that Auto Tempest is the best place to shop for your next car because they compile all the results from all the major listing sites into one place. And of course they support the best car content on YouTube. But did you also know that Auto Tempest now has a new mobile app? That's right, in addition to using it in your browser on a computer, you can also have it for iOS or Android in the palm of your hand. So check it out and download it. I know you'll love it the way I love it and leave them a great review.